Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So this week I'm going to tackle something I've never actually had to do before, but I feel like I had a pretty good understanding of how I'd go about accomplishing that. And that's to create a faux rock facade, or at least a small piece of wood. So come along with me and I'll kind of walk you through it as I'm going through the process and we'll all learn something together. So let's get to it. To get started, I grabbed a piece of XPS foam that I had left over from another project. I also grabbed a reference photo that I found online. This isn't necessarily what I'll make, but it will help to point me in the right direction for the next step, drawing out my stones. I'm starting with a few horizontal lines to get a feel for overall height, making sure to mix up short and tall rows to give it more character, before moving on to drawing in the gaps between rocks. This was probably the most challenging part because we naturally tend to create patterns, and these rocks should look as random as possible. So I tried to create variations on the spacing and overall shape, knowing that these were only guides and would likely be changed as I got further into the carving. So don't take too much time with this part because you're likely to switch it up in future steps. With my lines drawn, it was time to grab a box cutter and start to carve away at the space between the rocks, cutting in a narrow V shape to make the foam easier to remove. If I had to do it again, I'd make these cuts much more jagged and thinner, I'd also tried to go much deeper with these cuts to create natural shadows between the rows of stones, which would make the final product a bit more realistic looking. You'll want to use a stout blade for this step. The short box cutter blade and X-Acto knife handle wasn't a great choice, but it's what I had on hand so I made do. Once I had the horizontal lines carved away, it was time to start removing the spaces between the stones. Again, I take a less is more approach with this step because once the general shapes are cut out, I'll be using a wire brush to soften the cut edges to make the shapes a bit more organic. Now we're getting into the really messy part, so keep your shop back nearby, trust me. If you saw my foam to wood video, this will look a bit familiar. I'm using the bristles of the wire brush to round over the edges of the foam to help give our stones a bit more of a realistic appearance. This is definitely something I'd do with a larger, more narrow wire brush, especially if I had large sections to do. Work around the rocks, creating variation in both the faces and the valleys until you're happy with how it looks. So this next part is kind of unnecessary, and if I'm being totally honest, I really regret doing it. But it's in the video, so I figured I'd at least address it. See, my thinking was by using a larger wire brush, I'd be able to create more texture and variation. And in the end, it just sort of gave a texture that didn't really resemble stone. So learn from my mistakes and skip this step. The last thing before I get to painting is one of my favorite techniques to create a stone texture, which is using water and a propane torch. This helps to soften all the cut edges and the water creates a barrier between the foam and the flame to prevent some areas from melting, which creates great texture. With the carving out of the way, it's time to paint. I'm starting with my go-to, Drylock Original, which I've tinted to a slight gray-brown tone. This color is completely up to you and the look you're going for. After the entire piece is coated, I'll let it dry for a bit before applying a bit of raw sienna and green acrylic paint to give it a warmer appearance. Because I want variation, I'll just place a few drops of the raw sienna paint randomly across the piece and will use the still damp base paint to help me blend the colors together, starting from the bottom of each stone and moving up. The thinking here is that the sun would have discolored the tops of the stones, leaving the bottoms a bit darker. If you find that your base layer has dried, spray down the surface with a bit of water to help blend the paints better. I'll repeat this process with the green, this time focusing on the tops of the stones. This will give them a slight mossy appearance. The last color I'll add is a warm gray. This will help to smooth out the transitions a bit more and bring it all together. Mm -hmm. 
I'll mix a bit of black with our last color to fill in the grout lines between the stones, wetting down the surface to help it run into all of the voids. You may need to blot off the stones if you find that the paint is bleeding over onto the stone faces like it's done on mine. But when you're happy with how it looks, set it aside to dry. Once the paint had fully dried, I'll take a small amount of white acrylic paint and remove as much of it as possible from my brush and gently apply the paint across the tops of the rock faces to add a bit of a highlight. This takes a light touch when working on a dark surface, so go easy at first to get a feel for it. Now you can stop here, but we all know that that's not how I do it. So I grabbed some of the darker grout line color and added it to the water in my spray bottle to create a wash. I'll spray down the surface, which really helped to bring it all together, as well as create a few runs to give it a bit more character. And once it dried, it was done. And there you have it, a faux stone wall or at least a three foot by two foot section one. Hopefully some of the things that I learned along the way will be helpful to you as you embark on your own projects. And until then, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below and tell me how you might use this. But most importantly, go make something.